to the great Saint Sonja by Maharaj Singh, the hero of Sikh resistance to the British occupation of the Punjab. He was also head of a religious order. Bhai Maharaj Singh is a man whose personality is kind of framed by these seeming contradictions. He's a, a sevadar in, in a dera, but he's a religious leader. He's a warrior. He's a political revolutionary. He becomes a prisoner and then an, an inspiration for, for generations, centuries after his death. In a sense, he epitomizes that saint soldier persona that the, the tenth guru talks of. Not many people know that Bai Maharaj Singh is the first Sikh to arrive in Singapore on record. He serves as a conduit linking the Singapore Sikh community to an important period in the history of the Punjab and also to the history of Singapore and Punjab during the colonial period. So today, Bhai Maharaj Singh is a, almost a marginal character. We don't really know too much. But in that period of the Anglo-Sikh Wars, news of Bhai Maharaj Singh even trickles back to the breakfast tables of, of England. In a Lamba Sama, a British government they was the Xerder di Banjana, Mesuita Sikako di Jivanda, but a Hempake, Jidu Purpot Karach Karandi Goda. He's also known as a guru within an older saint tradition. These men were important for the transmission of Sikhism, they were revered for their piety and they were also able to perform miracles. Van Zetat's account of him are really compelling. He's actually referred to as Guru Maharaj. He's a guru of the Sikhs. When I started in the British Library in 1999, we were just putting together a computer database for objects and artworks from the India Office collections. The Bai Maharaj Singh collection was inside a locked cupboard, and I was made aware of it by a couple of colleagues who said, you really need to look in that cupboard over there. It's very rare that we find details about the names of the individual convicts or prisoners, as well as detailed correspondence between the local uh, colonial government as well as the government in India about what exactly is to be done about them. Some historians have said they are the most well-known prisoners of the British in the region. This portrait is a real window into both history and his character. On the back of the portrait, it says in an old writing, uh, Guru Maharaj Singh. There are not very many contemporary portraits of him. There are various images that, that are circulating, but they're very, very difficult to authenticate. Just someone that we don't know 
very well. So as a historian, it's just wonderful to have a, a mystery like that to try to dive into. I think our task really is now to unpack that information. We wanted the photograph to be really special. We set them up, you know, with beautiful lighting and sort of propped up the one manuscript to one side, chose the blue background. There are statements about the strengths of a Sikh person. You can fit them in the palm of your hand. They're small, incredibly personal objects of a Sikh warrior who had been captured during the Second Anglo-Sikh War. They were in the private collection of an Englishman, Henry Van Zetart, for several decades before they were given to the India Office Library. He kept them for his entire life. I, I don't know why exactly he did that. Was it a trophy of sorts? I think maybe it was a trophy of sorts, yes. What really struck me about Bai Maharaj Singh's objects was just how humble they were. This is not an object of statecraft or warcraft. This is who he is. He's on the run. And this is all he carries with him, the gare, the needle and thread, the conch shell, a few manuscripts. You really get a sense of the guerrilla leader, the kind of height of his power. There were two cutters, as Amandeep explained to me when we were creating the catalogue entries. They're steel rings. They're quite sharp along the edge, and they could be placed on a turban or tucked into your clothing and taken out and used as weapons. The, the ring was interesting. You could see that it was a, a signet ring. It had a, a back to front inscription on it. The great thing about having a digital photograph, you can just reverse the picture and read the inscription. Akal Sahai. May the immortal protect Maharaj Ji. This is a man who is simultaneously extraordinarily humble, a man of the people, but on the other hand is a sovereign in his own, his own right because the seal ring would, would have been used in his proclamations. It's interesting how it's opened up discussions about Bai Maharaj Singh and who he was and what he did. ਜਿਸ ਨੂੰ ਅਸੀਂ ਚਾਈਲਡਹੂਡ ਕਹਿ ਦਿੰਦੇ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਬਚਪਨ ਦਾ ਜੀਵਨ ਹੈ ਉਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਿੰਨੇ ਇੱਕ ਸੋਰਸ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਹਿਸਟਰੀ ਦੇ ਮਿਲਦੇ ਨੇ ਜਾਂ ਜਿੰਨੀਆਂ ਮੈਨੂਸਕ੍ਰਿਪਟ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੋਲ ਅਵੇਲੇਬਲ ਨੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਇੱਕ ਜ਼ਿਕਰ ਆਉਂਦਾ ਕਿ ਬਚਪਨ ਤੋਂ ਹੀ ਬੜੇ ਵਿਰਾਗੀ ਸੁਭਾਅ ਦੇ ਸੀ ਬੜੇ ਸਹਿਜ ਵਾਲੇ ਸੁਭਾਅ ਦੇ ਸੀ ਇਸ ਪਿੰਡ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਬਾਬਾ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਸਿੰਘ ਦਾ ਜਨਮ ਹੋਇਆ 
ਤੇ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਜਿਸ ਜਗ੍ਹਾ ਤੇ ਆਪਾਂ ਬੈਠੇ ਆ ਇਹ ਜਨਮ ਸਥਾਨ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਯਾਦ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਗੁਰਦੁਆਰਾ ਬਾਬਾ ਬਾਬਾ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਦੀ ਯਾਦਗਾਰੀ ਦਮਦਮਾ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਪਿੰਡ ਦੇ ਬਾਹਰ ਬਾਹਰ ਬਣਿਆ ਹੋਇਆ ਨਾਲ ਰੰਗ ਲੱਗਿਆ ਦਿੰਦਾ ਨੀ ਜਵਾਬ ਤੂੰ ਤਾਂ ਕਿਸੇ ਚੀਜ਼ ਨੂੰ ਦਿੰਦਾ ਨੀ ਜਵਾਬ ਤੂੰ ਤਾਂ ਕਿਸੇ ਚੀਜ਼ ਨੂੰ ਹਾਂਜੀ ਸਰਦਾ ਸਾਡੇ ਸਾਰੇ ਪਰਿਵਾਰ ਦੀ ਵੀ ਆਪਣੇ ਪਿੰਡ ਦੀ ਬਹੁਤ ਸਰਦਾ ਇੱਥੇ ਇਹ ਆਪਣੇ ਪਰਿਵਾਰ ਚ ਹੀ ਨੇ ਬਾਬਾ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਆਪਣਾ ਘਰ ਵੀ ਇੱਥੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਪਰਿਵਾਰ ਚ ਹੀ ਨੇ ਜਾਣੀ ਉਹ ਬਾਬਾ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨਾਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਨਿਹਾਲ ਸਿੰਘ ਸੀ ਫਿਰ ਬਾਬਾ ਉੱਥੇ ਬਾਬਾ ਵੀਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਦੇ ਡੇਰੇ ਚਲੇ ਗਏ ਉੱਥੇ ਫਿਰ ਸੇਵਾ ਕਰਦੇ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਤੇ ਲੰਗਰ ਦੀ ਸਵਾ ਮਸਤ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਲੰਗਰ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਨੂਆ ਪੈਂਦਾ ਸੀ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਬਾਬਾ ਜੀ ਉਹ ਸਭ ਤੋਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਤੋਤਾ ਸਿੰਘ ਦੇ ਡੇਰੇ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਗਏ ਉਹ ਵੀ ਇੱਕ ਡੇਰਾ ਸੀ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਬਚਪਨ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਵਿਦਿਆ ਗ੍ਰਹਿਣ ਕੀਤੀ ਹੈ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਡੇਰਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਗ੍ਰੰਥ ਪੜਾਏ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਸੀ ਇਹਦੇ ਤੋਂ ਇਲਾਵਾ ਪੋਲਿਟੀਕਲ ਪਾਲਿਸੀਜ਼ ਦੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਗ੍ਰੰਥ ਸੀਗੇ ਉਹ ਸਾਰੇ ਪੜਾਏ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਸੀ ਇਹਦਾ ਮਤਲਬ ਕਿ ਡੇਰਾ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਸਮਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਾਡੀ ਐਜੂਕੇਸ਼ਨ ਦਾ ਉਹ ਇੱਕ ਇੰਸਟੀਚਿਊਸ਼ਨਲ ਸੈਂਟਰ ਸੀ ਜਿੱਥੋਂ ਬੜੇ ਚੰਗੇ ਸੰਤ ਬੜੇ ਚੰਗੇ ਜਜਾਰੂ ਔਰ ਬਹੁਤ ਚੰਗੇ ਵਾਰੀਅਰ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਨੇ ਉਹ ਪੈਦਾ ਹੋਏ ਨੇ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਨੇ ਸਿੱਖ ਇਤਿਹਾਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਆਪਣਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਵੱਡਾ ਯੋਗਦਾਨ ਪਾਇਆ ਜਦੋਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਇਹ ਪਤਾ ਲੱਗਾ ਕਿ ਵੀਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਨੌਰੰਗਾਬਾਦ ਵਾਲਿਆਂ ਦਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਡੇਰਾ ਹੈ ਉਸ ਅਸਥਾਨ ਦੇ ਉੱਪਰ ਵਿਦਿਆ ਸੇਵਾ ਸਿੱਖੀ ਦੇ ਸੰਕਲਪ ਔਰ ਖਾਸ ਕਰਕੇ ਸਟੇਟ ਪਾਲਿਸੀਸ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਅਧਿਨ ਬਹੁਤ ਵਧੀਆ ਤਰੀਕੇ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਕਰਵਾਇਆ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਫਿਰ ਉਹ ਬਾਬਾ ਵੀਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਨੌਰੰਗਾਬਾਦ ਵਾਲਿਆਂ ਕੋ ਆ ਗਏ at the time of ranjit singh sort of height of power was a very important sikh religious leader uh, in amritsar but at one point in his career had actually been a trooper in uh, ranjit singh's um, feared khalsa army and baba veer singh's disciple his his closest disciple the man that he would ultimately pass his lineage on to was the young bai maharaj singh hey, hey, known as a uh, bhagwan singh that was his given name when he took initiation into the khalsa he he then commonly got known as maharaj singh because he would use the word maharaj in referring to people it's a it's an act of humility to refer to everybody as their king as their as their master and clearly this was a man who lived those sikh values lived that idea that you have to humble yourself in order to walk uh, a higher path ਹਜ਼ਾਰਾਂ ਦੀ ਤਦਾਦ ਚ ਰੋਜ਼ ਸ਼ਰਧਾਲੂ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਸੀ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਲੰਗਰ ਪ੍ਰਬੰਧ ਦੇ ਸਾਰਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਜੁਮਾ ਸੀ ਉਹ ਬਾਬਾ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਸਿੰਘ ਕੋ ਸੀ ਤੇ ਪ੍ਰਸ਼ਾਦ ਦੇਣ ਲੱਗਿਆ ਲਓ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਜੀ ਲਓ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਜੀ ਕਰਕੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਸਬੂਤਤ ਕਰਨਾ ਮਤਲਬ ਪਿਆਰ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਛਕਾਉਣਾ ਸੋ ਸੰਗਤ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਫਿਰ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਕਹਿਣ ਲੱਗ ਪਏ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਵੱਡਿਆਂ ਦੀਆਂ ਕਹਾਣੀਆਂ ਸੁਣ ਕੇ ਜੋ ਵੀ ਕੋਸ਼ਿਸ਼ ਅਸੀਂ ਕਰਦੇ ਆਂ ਸੰਤ ਸਪਾਈ ਦਾ ਤੇ ਸੇਵਾ ਤੇ ਸਿਮਰਨ ਦਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਸਭ ਤੋਂ ਵੱਡਾ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਸਿੱਖਿਆ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਜੀਵਨ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਮਿਲਦੀ ਹੈ ਮੈਂ ਬਾਬਾ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਦੀ ਪੰਜਵੀਂ ਜਨਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਹਾਂ ਬਾਬਾ ਗੁਰੂ ਰਾਜਪਾਲ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਜੋ ਇਸ ਵੇਲੇ ਡੇਰੇ ਦੇ ਪ੍ਰਮੁੱਖ ਨੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਡੇਰੇ ਦੀ ਸੇਵਾ ਸੰਭਾਲ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਸਾਥ ਦਿੰਨੇ ਹਾਂ this is picture of baba beer singh ji baba beer singh narangabad uh, you can say this is uh, as a kind of a main headquarter all his things was at this place jis tarah sadiyan panch peediyan ho gayan ne baba ji to baad ise tarah hi oh jehdi sangat oh unna di avi peedi dar peedi hi anata challe aunda so how did you get all this how did you when did you receive it
ਜੋ ਵੀ ਦਰਸ਼ਨ ਕਰਦਾ ਸੀ ਨਾ ਉਹ ਬੋਲਦਾ ਸੀ ਕਿ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਗੁਰੂ ਗੋਬਿੰਦ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀ ਨਜ਼ਰ ਆ ਰਹੇ ਇਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਵੀ ਇਹ ਬਾਬਾ ਜੀ ਦੇ ਦਸਤਾਰ ਤੇ ਸਜਾਉਣ ਵਾਲਾ ਚੱਕਰ ਕਿ ਜੋ ਦੁਸ਼ਮਣ ਦੇ ਤਲਵਾਰ ਦਾ ਵਾਰ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਇਹ ਕੱਟ ਨਾ ਕਰੇ ਸੇਫਟੀ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਵੀ ਜੇ ਜ਼ੁਲਮ ਕਰਨਾ ਪਾਪ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਸਿਆਣਾ ਵੀ ਪਾਪ ਹੈ ਸਿੱਖ ਹਿਸਟਰੀ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਬਹੁਤ ਆਏ ਆ ਵੀ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਸੰਤ ਮਹਾਪੁਰਸ਼ਾਂ ਨੇ ਹੀ ਜਦੋਂ ਲੋੜ ਪੈਣ ਤੇ ਹਥਿਆਰ ਚੱਕੇ ਜਦੋਂ ਸਿੱਖ ਪੰਥ ਦਾ ਰਾਜ ਖਤਮ ਹੋਇਆ ਅੰਗਰੇਜ਼ਾਂ ਦਾ ਰਾਜ ਇੱਥੇ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਹੋਇਆ ਤੇ ਅੰਗਰੇਜ਼ਾਂ ਦੇ ਖਿਲਾਫ ਜਦੋਂ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਚੁੱਕਣ ਦਾ ਸਮਾਂ ਆਇਆ ਤੇ ਉਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਵੀ ਬਾਬਾ ਜੀ ਨੇ ਕੋਈ ਕਸਰ ਨਹੀਂ ਛੱਡੀ ਜਦੋਂ ਸੀ ਭਾਈ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਸਿੰਘ ਦੀ ਇਤਿਹਾਸਿਕ ਨਜ਼ਰੀਏ ਤੋਂ ਗੱਲ ਕਰਦੇ ਆਂ ਤਾਂ ਕਿਤੇ ਨਾ ਕਿਤੇ ਇੱਕ ਸ਼ਬਦ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਵੀ ਜੁੜਦਾ ਹੈ ਸੇਂਟ ਸੋਲਜਰ ਤਾਂ ਜਦੋਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਤਿਹਾਸਿਕ ਨਜ਼ਰੀਏ ਨੂੰ ਹੋਰ ਪਿੱਛੇ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਤਾਂ ਸਿੱਖ ਦੀ ਮਾਨਸਿਕਤਾ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਗੁਰੂ ਹਰਗੋਬਿੰਦ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਦਾ ਅਕਸ ਪੈਦਾ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਅਕਾਲ ਤਖਤ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਦੇ ਰੂਪ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਮੀਰੀ ਔਰ ਪੀਰੀ ਦੇ ਸੰਕਲਪ ਨੂੰ ਪ੍ਰਗਟ ਕੀਤਾ ਕੋਟੀ ਹੂ ਪੀਰ ਵਰਜ ਰਹਾਏ ਜਾਂ ਮੀਰ ਸੁਣਿਆ ਤਾਇਆ ਪੀਰ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਹੈ ਸਪਿਰਚੁਅਲ ਪਾਵਰ ਮੀਰ ਹੈ ਸਟੇਟ ਦੀ ਪਾਵਰ ਸੋ ਇਸ ਚੀਜ਼ ਨੂੰ ਬੈਲੈਂਸ ਰੱਖਣ ਦੇ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਸਿੱਖ ਧਰਮ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਮੀਰੀ ਔਰ ਪੀਰੀ ਦਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਸੰਕਲਪ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਪੈਦਾ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਇੱਕ ਗੱਲ ਯਾਦ ਆ ਜਾਂਦੀ ਹੈ ਜ਼ੁਦਾ ਹੋ ਦੀ ਸਿਆਸਤ ਸੇ ਤੋ ਰਹਿ ਜਾਂਦੀ ਹੈ ਚੰਗੇ ਜੀ ਕਿ ਜੇਕਰ ਸਿਆਸਤ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਸਟੇਟ ਦੀ ਪਾਵਰ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਧਰਮ ਦੇ ਅਸੂਲ ਕੱਢ ਦਿੱਤੇ ਜਾਣ ਤਾਂ ਫਿਰ ਉੱਥੇ ਜ਼ੁਲਮ ਰਹਿ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਸੋ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਬੀਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਦਰੰਗਾਬਾਦ ਨੇ ਉਹ ਸਿਪਾਹੀ ਤੋਂ ਸੰਤ ਬਣਦੇ ਨੇ ਤੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਭਾਈ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਸਿੰਘ ਨੇ ਉਹ ਸੰਤ ਤੋਂ ਸਿਪਾਹੀ ਬਣ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਨੇ ਪਰ ਦੋਵਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਮਰੂਪਤਾ ਇਹ ਰਹਿੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਮੀਰੀ ਤੇ ਪੀਰੀ ਦਾ ਸੰਕਲਪ ਕਿਤੇ ਵੀ ਖਤਮ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੱਲਾ ਔਰ ਮਹੱਲਾ ਬੇਸਿਕਲੀ ਵਰਡ ਇਹ ਹੈ ਹੱਲਾ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਆਫੈਂਸਿਵ ਮੁਹੱਲਾ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਡਿਫੈਂਸ ਕਰਨਾ ਕਿਸੇ ਜਗ੍ਹਾ ਦੇ ਉੱਪਰ ਹਮਲਾ ਕਰਨਾ ਔਰ ਉਸ ਜਗ੍ਹਾ ਦੀ ਡਿਫੈਂਸ ਕਰਨੀ ਹੱਲਾ ਮਹੱਲਾ ਸ਼ਬਦ ਹੈ ਜਿਸ ਨੂੰ ਅਸੀਂ ਬਦਲ ਕੇ ਹੋਲਾ ਮਹੱਲਾ ਕਰ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਇੱਕ ਇੱਕ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਕਹਿ ਸਕਦੇ ਕਿ ਆਰਟੀਫੀਸ਼ੀਅਲ ਵਾਰਫੇਅਰ ਸੀ ਜਿਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਲੜਾਈ ਦੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਟ੍ਰੇਨਿੰਗ ਉਹ ਮਿਲਦੀ ਸੀ ਸੋ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਗਤਕੇ ਦੀ ਸਾਡੀ ਪਰੰਪਰਾ ਹੈ ਸੋ ਉਹ ਹੋਲਾ ਮਹੱਲਾ ਗੁਰੂ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਨੇ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਸੀ ਉਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਦਾ ਸਾਡੇ ਸਾਹਮਣੇ ਸਿਰਜ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਸੱਚਮੁੱਚ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਸੰਘਰਸ਼ ਲਈ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਤਿਆਰ ਕੀਤਾ ਜਾ ਸਕਦਾ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਗੁਰੂ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਨੇ ਹੋਲੇ ਮਹੱਲੇ ਨੂੰ ਸਿਰਜ ਕੇ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਮਸਮੂਈ ਚੰਗ ਦੀ ਇੱਕ ਆਰਟੀਫੀਸ਼ੀਅਲ ਬੈਟਲ ਦੀ ਆਰਟੀਫੀਸ਼ੀਅਲ ਵਾਰ ਦੀ ਜਿਹਨੂੰ ਅਸੀਂ ਫੀਲਡ ਟ੍ਰੇਨਿੰਗ ਐਕਸਰਸਾਈਜ਼ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਆ ਭਾਈ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਸਿੰਘ ਨੇ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਤਿਆਰ ਕਰਕੇ ਦੱਸ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਸੱਚਮੁੱਚ ਇਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਮੈਦਾਨੇ ਚੰਗ ਦੇ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਤਿਆਰ ਕੀਤਾ ਜਾ ਸਕਦਾ ਹੈ ਸੋ ਆਈ ਹੈਵ ਡਨ ਕੁਆਇਟ ਅ ਬਿਟ ਆਫ ਰਿਸਰਚ ਔਨ ਦੀ ਈਸਟ ਇੰਡੀਆ ਕੰਪਨੀ ਇਟਸ ਅ ਟ੍ਰੇਡ ਆਰਗੇਨਾਈਜੇਸ਼ਨ ਇਟਸ ਅ ਗਰੂਪ ਆਫ ਮਰਚੈਂਟਸ ਇਨ ਲੰਡਨ who decided to all club together to fund voyages to the east so they can bring goods back to London and sell on the open market. But within 150 years
Guru Gobind Singh, who we know is very famous for militarizing the Sikhs, after his death in 1708, the next sort of 70 to 80 years or so are really probably the darkest time in Sikh history. You know, you think about where Punjab is in the northwest, you know, it's a gateway into India. You have various numbers of, you know, sort of Persian and Afghan invasions through Punjab to sack Delhi. You have this waning Mughal Empire, and you now have the presence of the British. And all of these people are vying for control of this northwest region. Out of that emerges one young ruler, Maharaja Ranjit Singh, the Maharaja of Punjab, brings together this whole region. The Sikh Empire was secular, very rich, progressive. It's peaceful, it's prosperous. Very cultured and sophisticated, and because of all those reasons together, it was feared. With that power came the beauty of, of the artistic expression in the Punjab. Ranjit Singh de Rai de Vich Sab to Vad Vidyak Adare Si Aurtam Vidya Da Jada O Samay de Vich Kaya Sak Deo Ke Vidya Deen Da Tang Or Vidya Di Prapat Karan Di Jadi Austan Ginti Ya Duniya De Sare Alakya Na Lo Jada Si To be able to tell the story of the kind of rise, evolution and fall of the Sikhs I started to kind of piece together this jigsaw through art my prized possessions would be sort of possessions very much connected to the Royal Court of Lahore. So together, they kind of help Sikh heritage come to life. And we know that we have this concept of the warrior saint aspect in Sikh history and very much depicted if we look at, for example, some of the arms and armour of the time. You have uh, a particular sword that was uh, most likely given as a gift to Maharaja Ranjit Singh, inscribed in Gurmukhi uh, with a quote that relates very much to kingship and the success of a ruler being very much in line with kind of both feeding and protecting the poor. In that sword you have this balance. Maharaj Singh Jirur Soch Dene Ke Ek Ohi Raj Hai Jithe Sarbat De Paleda Sankalp Jada O Sir Jaya Ja Sakta Hai Ranjit Singh, he dies in 1839 and within 10 years the entire Sikh kingdom collapses. There is assassination after assassination. On the borders of Punjab you have the British that are just watching and they're watching slowly as Lahore ensues in, in, into chaos. History is all about contexts. And he operates in this, this context of the collapse of the Sikh Empire. And it's, it's at that moment, really, when, when he rises. In a sense, there are three actors in play in, in Lahore, in that period after Ranjit Singh. Those that were loyal to the old king, those that are loyal to his Prime Minister's family, which are the Dogras, and then there's this kind of malevolent force of the British. For the faction that's loyal to the old king, their greatest fear is that the Dogras are in, are in some kind of correspondence with the British, because teaming up with the British is the game changer. This mission to right the wrong that took place, that his guru, if you like, had been killed. And that really starts the revolution that, um, that catapults Bhai Maharaj Singh right into the centre of Sikh politics. Bhai Maharaj Singh becomes this kind of revolutionary leader because he takes on a political angle. He's more than just a very important religious leader. It took them a while to encroach into Punjab, it was only after the Second Anglo-Sikh War that the East India Company expanded into the Northwest Frontier Province. The First Anglo-Sikh Wars happen um, in 1845, and there's a string of battles that happen along Ranjit Singh's southern border. The result of those is the defeat of the, the Sikh army. Lahore is compelled to give up actually a very wealthy part of its territory, which is the Jalandhar Dwab. Many Sikhs from the Punjab would recognize today. The Second Anglo-Sikh War, which actually commenced in Multan, 
it's the spark that was needed for the British. And then there's a string of battles that happens in an area which is in modern day Pakistan. So you get Multan, Gujarat, Jallianwala, and Bhai Maharaj Singh is involved in almost all of those. There's this really interesting period between the two wars. So this is from 1845 to 1848. And this is where he kind of really makes a name for himself. ਆਖਰੀ ਸ਼ਬਦ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਸੋਨ ਸਿੰਘ ਸੀਤਲ ਨੇ ਵਰਤੇ ਨੇ ਕਿ ਜੇਕਰ ਸਿੱਖ ਬਾਟੇ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਪਾਏ ਹੋਏ ਪਤਾਸਿਆਂ ਦੀ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਆਪਸ ਚ ਘੁਲ ਜਾਣਗੇ ਤਾਂ ਫਿਰ ਤਾਂ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਕੋਲ ਖੰਡੇ ਵਰਗੀ ਸ਼ਕਤੀ ਹੋਵੇਗੀ ਰਾਜ ਵੀ ਹੋਵੇਗਾ ਤੇ ਜੇ ਇਹ ਇਕੱਠੇ ਨਾ ਹੋਏ ਫਿਰ ਰਾਜ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਰਹੇਗਾ ਤੇ ਇਸੇ ਹੀ ਮਾਨਸਿਕਤਾ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਸੰਘਰਸ਼ ਦਾ ਰੂਪ ਪੈਦਾ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਭਾਈ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਸਿੰਘ ਦਾ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਕੋਸ਼ਿਸ਼ ਸੀ ਕਿ ਸੰਘਰਸ਼ ਨੂੰ ਚੰਗਾ ਲੀਡਰ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਜਾਵੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਸਮਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਪਾਈ ਮੈਂ ਰਾਜ ਸਿੰਘ ਤੋਂ ਬਿਨਾ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕੋਈ ਐਸੀ ਸ਼ਖਸੀਅਤ ਨਜ਼ਰ ਨਹੀਂ ਆਉਂਦੀ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਪਿੰਡ ਦੇ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਆਮ ਜਨ ਮਾਨਸਿਕਤਾ ਨੂੰ ਇੰਨਾ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਇਨਸਪਾਇਰ ਕਰ ਸਕੇ ਕਿ ਉਹ ਦੁਬਾਰਾ ਬ੍ਰਿਟਿਸ਼ ਰਾਜ ਦੇ ਖਿਲਾਫ ਲੜਨ ਨੂੰ ਤਿਆਰ ਹੋ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਨੇ ਬਲਕਿ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਸਿੰਘ ਦੇ ਰੂਪ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਸਿੱਖੀ ਦੀਆਂ ਹਾਇਰ ਸਪਿਰਿਟਸ ਨੇ ਉਹ ਫਿਰ ਜਾਗਦੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਹੀ ਰੀਲੀ ਹੈਡ ਦ ਹਾਰਟ ਆਫ ਦ ਪੀਪਲ ਆਈ ਥਿੰਕ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਹਿਜ਼ ਰਿਲੇਸ਼ਨਸ਼ਿਪ ਵਿਦ ਹਿਜ਼ ਫੋਲੋਅਰਸ ਹਿਜ਼ ਰਿਲੇਸ਼ਨਸ਼ਿਪ ਟੂ ਦ ਲੈਂਡ ਆਫ ਪੰਜਾਬ his defiance no, i think about sikh spirit jadon assi pai maharaj singh de itihasik srotan da adhyan karde ha te har jagah te zikr aunda unna di kali kodi so kya janda si ke us jhelam nu paar karde ha unna di poosh chhut gayi te oh pani de vich rud gaye british ne is khabar nu inna zyada phailaya ke maharaj singh ne jinna vi punjab de vich apna network banaya hoya oh tut jave lokan nu eh pata lagge ਤੇ ਹੁਣ ਅਸੀਂ ਲੀਡਰਲੈਸ ਹੋ ਗਏ ਹੁਣ ਅਸੀਂ ਲੜਾਈ ਨਹੀਂ ਲੜ ਸਕਦੇ ਪਰ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਅਫਵਾਹ ਤੋਂ ਤੀਸਰੇ ਦਿਨ ਜਿੰਨਾ ਵੀ ਨੈਟਵਰਕ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਸਿੰਘ ਨੇ ਪੈਦਾ ਕੀਤਾ ਸੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਤੱਕ ਖਬਰ ਪਹੁੰਚ ਚੁੱਕੀ ਸੀ ਕਿ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਸਿੰਘ ਜੀਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਸਮਿਆਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਕੋਈ ਸੋਸ਼ਲ ਮੀਡੀਆ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੀ ਕੋਈ ਟੈਲੀਫੋਨ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੀ ਪਰ ਉਹ ਕਿੰਨਾ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਟਰੈਵਲ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਜਾਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਕਿੰਨਾ ਵੱਡਾ ਨੈਟਵਰਕ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਸੀ ਉਹ ਕ੍ਰੀਏਟ ਕੀਤਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਹਰ ਖਬਰ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਉਹ ਲੋਕਾਂ ਤੱਕ ਪਹੁੰਚਦੀ ਹੈ ਇਸ ਕਾਈਂਡ ਆਫ ਸਲਿਪਰੀ ਕੈਰੈਕਟਰ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਸ਼ੈਡੋ ਹੀ ਡਸਨਟ ਐਗਜ਼ਿਸਟ ਆਈ ਮੀਨ ਦ ਬ੍ਰਿਟਿਸ਼ ਆਰ ਐਬਸੋਲਿਟਲੀ ਪੈਟ੍ਰੀਫਾਈਡ ਐਟ ਦਿਸ ਮੈਨ ਦੇ ਕੈਨ ਫੇਸ ਐਨ ਆਰਮੀ ਥੈਟਸ ਈਜ਼ੀ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਵੇਅਰ ਇਟ ਇਜ਼ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਹਾਊ ਇਟ ਮੂਵਸ ਬਾਈ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਸਿੰਘ ਐਕਟਸ ਐਜ਼ ਅ ਕਲਾਸਿਕ ਗਰਿਲਾ ਲੀਡਰ ਹੀ ਡਸਨਟ ਅਲਾਈ ਹਿਮਸੈਲਫ ਟੂ ਦ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਆਰਮੀ ਬ੍ਰਿਟਿਸ਼ ਦੀਆਂ ਪਾਲਿਸੀਸ ਤੇ ਰਾਜਨੀਤਿਕ ਪੱਧਰ ਦੇ ਉੱਪਰ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਦੇ ਅਲਾਈਅੰਸ ਹੋ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਪੂਰੀ ਜਾਣਕਾਰੀ ਹੈ ਇਸ ਗੱਲ ਦੀ ਇਸ ਇਨ ਦ ਦ ਟਾਈਮਸ ਆਫ ਲੰਡਨ ਦ ਦ ਨਿਊਜ਼ਪੇਪਰ ਆਫ ਰੈਕੋਰਡ ਯੂ ਨੋ ਥੇਅਰ ਹੀ ਇਜ਼ ਬੀਇੰਗ ਰਿਫਰਡ ਟੂ ਐਸ ਐਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਬਬਲੀ ਦ ਮੋਸਟ ਸੋਰਟ ਪੋਟੈਂਟ ਫੋਰਸ ਇਨ ਦ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਇਟਸ ਅ ਵੈਰੀ ਇੰਟਰਸਟਿੰਗ ਰਿਪੋਰਟ ਵੇਅਰ ਹੀ ਇਜ਼ ਰਿਫਰਡ ਟੂ ਐਸ ਅ ਮਿਰਾਕਲ ਮੇਕਰ ਥੈਟ ਕੁਡ ਜਸਟ ਬੀ ਅ ਕਲਾਸਿਕ ਕੇਸ ਆਫ ਇਫ ਇਫ ਸਮਬਡੀ ਇਜ਼ ਡਿਫੀਟਿੰਗ ਦ ਮਾਈਟ ਆਫ ਦ ਈਸਟ ਇੰਡੀਅਨ ਕੰਪਨੀ ਥੈਨ it must be something more than just human right we're not we're not fighting a fair fair battle right so he must have something supernatural going on this notion that he was behind a plot to assassinate men of stature in british control in india which may well have been true was an incredibly important
ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਸਿੰਘ ਹੀ ਐਸੇ ਕਹਿ ਸਕਦੇ ਹੋ ਕਿ ਬਾਗੀ ਨੇ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਦੇ ਜਿੰਦਾ ਜਾਂ ਮਰਦਾ ਪਕੜ ਦੇ ਉੱਪਰ ਬ੍ਰਿਟਿਸ਼ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਦੇ ਵੱਲੋਂ 10000 ਰੁਪਏ ਦਾ ਐਲਾਨ ਕੀਤਾ ਗਿਆ ਹੈ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਸਮਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਬ੍ਰਿਟਿਸ਼ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਦੇ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਕਿਸੇ ਵਾਂਟਡ ਮੁਜ਼ਰਮ ਦੇ ਬਾਰੇ ਇਹ ਸਭ ਤੋਂ ਵੱਡਾ ਇਨਾਮ ਸੀ size capture how do they know where he was i think it's most likely that uh, he was given up by somebody who was close to him the stakes were high whoever did it would have become a rich man the news of his capture rippled through the british in india it was a point of celebration but but fear as well because he was such an unknown the way that he's quickly uh taken out of the punjab he's held in kolkata the fact that they don't execute him well he was obviously regarded as so important that the british felt it was necessary for him to be moved when i first saw this picture i think i was overwhelmed with sadness really looking at this portrait of a very important figure in Sikh history so when it came to auction I, I you know I wasn't going to let it go it... Dalhousie who put this price on his head of 10000 rupees uh, asked for this portrait to be commissioned and this portrait was kept by Dalhousie uh, as a, as a trophy the mood in the painting is very well captured I think by Colesworthy Grant there's a real energy in and a presence that he has still defiant you know he's uncertain of his future he knows uh, that the cause that he was so passionately fighting for is slowly waning uh, he's now been captured he's in calcutta he doesn't know where he's about to go are very much through the connections he had to prisoners who were being ex- exiled across the oceans so what really got you uh one of the things that that was striking was the the great extent to which the british went to make sure that uh by marriage singh uh, did not become a uh, martyr for his cause that they sought to punish him but but calibrate that in such a way that he would not be too punished and that would not galvanize his followers back in punjab against them Bai Maharaj Singh's story is a bit different because his incarceration as a political prisoner meant that he was not part of the large scale migration of Sikhs to Malaya and Singapore in the later part of the 1800s. Many of the Sikhs were recruited into the British security forces. It sets him apart from that history that is more well known and established. he was really treated not like an ordinary prisoner because everybody realized that he had something in him the expect that karak singh being the follower of maharaj singh would be the one doing the cooking uh, he refused to cook and the british actually hired a a cook at the cost of uh, four rupees a month to cook for the two of them which was i think a special privilege that had not been accorded to non european prisoners in singapore at that time At some point the British governor of the Straits Settlements appears to have made a personal request uh, to the British government in Calcutta to locate an old copy of the Adi Granth and have it sent to the prisoners 
And what's interesting is the extent of trouble the British went to locate this copy of the Adi Grant. Uh, it was apparently a 115-year-old copy that was uh, transported by bullock cart all the way from Lahore and then on by ship. Begum. The cell he was in was walled up to the top and as a result of which his health slowly started deteriorating which resulted in his blindness. Maharaj Singh and Karak Singh, the two prisoners as were, had written about their experience in captivity. I think it's not something that we see very often when we read about the convicts. Many of them are voiceless. We were able to hear their sort of traumas and frustrations from being the uh, healthy leader of a rebellion back where he was in Punjab to someone who was now in need of assistance to move around, wasn't able to see, who was frequently in pain. These are very visceral. Sometimes when we read about you know, the stories of people who are imprisoned by the British, uh, the stories of empire, you read dispassionately about control. Seeing these accounts really brings it home. within a year. what happened after that, that he was uh, very much someone who stayed in the collective memory of many people who were living in Singapore at that time. And that there was in fact a physical monument to him, to his role both in the uh, anti-colonial struggle in Punjab as well as to his uh, religiosity as someone who is, continues to be commemorated to this day. Today, Pai Maharaj Singh is probably better known in Singapore than he is known in India because of the memorial and the link that the Sikh community in Singapore has with him. He has become, over the years, a important historical icon. There was actually a Samad at the former Singapore General Hospital grounds. In the post-World War II period, Sikh devotees started gathering at the Samad and they started to hold regular prayer sessions there because they believed that the Samad belonged to a Sikh saint. Oh, okay, because we are so used to saying Baba Karam Singh, you know? we never say Bai Maharaj Singh. In those days, the memorial was not known as Bai Maharaj Singh. It was known as Baba Karam Singh. When I realized that he's a Karmi Bala, 
So probably that short form came to be known as Karam Singh. Before the British had managed to capture Maharaj Singh, there were very extensive reports of the sort of miracles that he was supposed to be able to do. Things such as when serving the communal meal, it would never run out. When they were cooking dal and the ladle dropped into the dal and he just put his hand and he stirred the dal and his hand was perfectly normal and people really couldn't believe how something like this can happen. He was locked in solitary confinement, but there would be sightings of him outside his cell Today, Baba Karam Singh Ji, or by Maharaj Singh, is currently known as, he is still remembered. I'm Bibi Midro, Mrs. Kartar Singh Dalhunagar. For a long time, we had been hearing about this Baba Ji. When I was young, we were staying at the uh, GH quarter. Father was working there. Next door is a nursing quarter. Most mix of Chinese, Malay, Punjabi nurses. After night duty, they can see Babaji walk with them. The way he walks slowly, Never turn right or left, straight. And then with a white little beard, white, not say a pug, he just tie like that round. And there's a green field, beautiful field, small one. He will go there, that's where. Sarudulce had been working in the prison for many years. So he said, we got this thing, Baba Jivan. Where shall we put this man? And Kartar, he brought this man to show where Baba Ji used to disappear. So they put this stone there. My father, Ram Singh Bajwa, was working in the General Hospital quarters as a male nurse. I was seven years old when I used to visit with my family by Mahara Singh's uh, Samad. It was very close to the Sila Road, the current Sila Road Sikh temple also. There was a shortcut there. La. From that hospital avenue, you walk through, just after the nurses' quarters, around this area there was, was the Samad of Baba Karam Singh. Who were the kind of people he used to visit? Both the Sikhs and non-Sikhs used to visit the Samad, mainly from the nearby areas of Kampong Baru, Sila Road. The Samad was in the middle, okay? By the side of the Samad was area for uh, devotees to sit down. And uh, there was a uh, South Indian gentleman who used to look after the cleanliness of the Samad. In 1961, a Sikh police officer whose prayers had been answered came and placed the Siri Guru Gurgan Sab in the Samad. From then onwards, people started pouring in. They cook from home, they bring food there. They will always sit outside the fence area. We will roll out a mat there and then food was served. And the ambulance find very hard. Got to slow down, go, because it's a small road. An understanding was reached between the leaders of the Sikh community and the government. And so, on Wednesday, the 12th day of October 1966, in the evening, about 7 p.m., after prayers, uh, the scripture, the Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib, was taken with due respect in a procession of motorcars escorted by the police to the Silat Road Gurdwara. Four Chinese men came to dig and they fainted. That means this very strong place. They carried the Babismat here 
uh, there were a few of them who carried. One of them was my mother-in-law. She was really blessed. Mother-in-law, Udam Kaur. Every Singaporean knows her. She has done so much selfless seva here for about maybe more than 40 years. Nineteen sixty six marked a first important move, the connection between Bai Maharaj Singh, the Samad, and the Silat Road Gudwara. The Silat Road Gudwara was established in the early nineteen hundreds by members of the Sikh police contingent and since then it has served as an important historical landmark in Singapore and for the Singapore Sikh community. So when this memorial moved there, it stayed at the front of the Silla Road Sikh temple for about 30 years where the current uh, male shoe storage area is. <laughs> Silla Road Sikh temple was not very well patronized. It used to be a sort of a transit housing for the Sikhs when it first started. So there were a lot of families, maybe 40, 50 families living within the compounds of the temple. Like a Punjabi kampong, you know, here we are staying. And all used to come and pray every morning. That's all the houses left and then they extend the temple. 81, 82. In 2006, the community commemorated the 150th birthday anniversary of Bai Maharaj Singh and there were concerted efforts to present and construct a verifiable historical narrative behind Bai Maharaj Singh and his significance and importance for the Singapore Sikh community. Because down the road, people are not going to remember anything. So we undertook this project to write a small book on the history of Silla Road Sikh Temple and the Pai Maharaj Singh Memorial. Minister Mentor Lee Kuan Yew, who was deemed to be the father of Singapore, he was pleased to see the change in the environment of the memorial. He mentioned about the Sikhs being a model minority, punching well above his weight. So starting from the arrival of the Sikhs to Singapore as members of the Sikh police contingent and the Tanjung Paga Dock police force to their contribution in the fields of the military security forces, some of them became watchmen, cattle farmers. And even the civil service. Singapore has come a long way and uh, how Pai Maharaj Singh and his belief system has grown. I think it's a good parallel between the two of uh, nation building and here I would say it's more character building. we have not asked, what would have been the situation of us today if Bhai Maharaj Singh was not taken as a prisoner and brought to Singapore? The story would have been a completely different story for the Sikhs in Singapore. Or you can say, no story to say. The Singaporean Sikh communities search whilst they were trying to find a figure to bring together the community, they found it in the figure of Bhai Maharaj Singh.
Kertar say he made himself one big one with the cement and there was a door, the stone he keep inside. Basically like spring cleaning every week. It's he who bring us. Lah. We cannot come without him. In Sikhism, uh, seva is selfless service. A lot of people go to Sina Road Sikh temple to do a lot of seva because of Pai Maharaj. Most Sikh temples will always cater food, but the crowds at the Sina Road Sikh temple are there seven days a week. Sina Road Sikh temple serves three meals a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. So what was it about this topic which made you want to do more research on it? I was drawn to the stories of miracles, this oral tradition surrounding the figure of Bhai Maharaj Singh. It offered a different aspect of Sikh history. There would be Chinese and North Indian devotees who would pray. There were examples of um, people who would come and they would pray for a child or people who were sick who would then get healed and they became believers. Every day I will come and just ask for God, please give me a, a brother, please give me a brother. Whatever they have sick for, they have actually got it. Baba Ji has blessed them. This is my brother, he is our side to say. So he has these multiple names, he has these multiple personas. He's born as Nihal Singh. He takes, takes the name Bhagwan Singh when he's initiated into the Khalsa. He's known as Bhai Maharaj Singh during the most productive time of his life. And then when he ends his life, mysteriously, he's known as Garam Singh, and uh, very lovingly known as Garam Singh throughout the island of Singapore. Oh, hey, hey, hey. We try to hold 12 programs a year uh, in memory of each uh, saint in the Sampradha. So today was by Maharaj Singh Ji's. I hope that the history of Pai Maharaj Singh is uh, told throughout the world so that at least people will know how a saint soldier fought for the value systems that he had and never gave up. This element of Chardikala, which is staying in high esteem all the time, not letting any obstacles come in your way, is basically having a very, very positive attitude about everything, especially when you're down. मैं अपने बड़े बड़े पाव समझता हूँ इसे तरह ही इसे वाल कर दे रही है तो मैं अपने जीवन को सफला समझूंगा कि मैं महाराज ने मनी बड़ी बड़ी सोनी सेवा बख्शिया तो मैं वो चर्दी करना आल दे तांदे ही नाल वो संगदी सेवा कर दे रहा वो वक्त भी देखे हैं तारीख की राहों ने लम्हों ने कथा की सदियों ने सजा पाई आज भी असी संभल जाइए ते किसी तरह देनाल पाई मैं राजसिंग दे जीवन में एक वधिया रूप दे विच प्रेजेंट कर सकिए ता मेरे ख्याल देनाल साढे नौ जन उन्हा दे जीवन तो बहुत सिखिया ले सकते हैं। How to be brave within ourselves and not be timid, 
we don't have to go around fighting with people but we have to still observe some bravery we have to stand for our rights the british knew about us they had the six fighting on their side world war 1 world war 2 the colonial period of uh, indian history is disturbing but it's interesting it's a period that we all stand to learn a lot about ourselves from sadly the cause for which he was fighting for wasn't successful but i think the very least we can do is to consider what was the punjab that he was trying to save jis tarah de naal oh punjab de ch alliance paida kar rahe si ke shayad beshak asafal rahe par assi itihasik nazariye de vich ajj vi onna nu ik safal yodha jujaru sanspai mande ha te je samuche hindustan de nazariye de vich vekhna hai te british government de khilaf 1853 da gadar koi ahmiyat nahi rakhda ਆਰਸੀ ਮਜ਼ੂਮਦਾਰ ਵਰਗੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਹਿਸਟੋਰੀਅਨ ਨੇ ਉਹ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਨੇ ਕਿ ਇਹ ਤਾਂ ਕੇਵਲ ਨਿੱਜੀ ਮਫਾਦਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਇੱਕ ਛੋਟੀ ਜੀ ਮਿਊਟੀ ਨੇਸ਼ਨ ਸੀ ਪਰ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਮਹਾਰਾਜ ਸਿੰਘ ਦੀ ਜੰਗ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਫਰਸਟ ਵਾਰ ਫॉर ਫਰੀਡਮ ਹੈ ਕਿਤੇ ਵੀ ਬਗਾਵਤ ਨਹੀਂ ਬਲਕਿ ਇੱਕ ਸਟੇਟ ਨੂੰ ਐਸਟੈਬਲਿਸ਼ ਕਰਨ ਦੇ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਉਹ ਇੱਕ ਐਸੇ ਯੋਧੇ ਨੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਸਭ ਤੋਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਇਹ ਸੰਘਰਸ਼ ਦੀ ਸ਼ੁਰੂਆਤ ਕਰਦੇ ਨੇ ਦੇ ਗੋਇੰਗ ਦੇ ਸੋ ਵਾਈ ਡੂ ਦੇ ਗੋ ਦੇ they get peace when you get peace of mind you get all your problems are solved the problems are solved only when you are happy you know you go there yes you have to ask for something but if you know how to ask kisne pedia gores patla teko happy baba ji do this for me baba ji do that for me that's all but have we in actual fact realized how much of sacrifices he has done and how he came here and had to die in those condition oh really i today realize what baba ji is actually it's not because of anything no it's because of ignorance we did not know all this last words any your hope no i do, no i do actually and it's kind of emerged out of this conversation i i i think this is one of the great untold stories of of sick history you, you realize just how central he was to the the movement of that story from um sick sovereignty to this period of colonialization but also just in that conversation that we had i realized that india has never and punjab and punjabis have never really embraced him and yet they embrace so many others that have battled against against the british so i really do hope that this kind of revitalizes his memory well that uh, completes the story of maharaj singh that i mean briefly that is the story although a lot more could be said about him and this man maharaj singh begum pura